Hey Rumpers, I wanted to show you the deck that I've been climbing with. Uh, so this is my take on a skeleton deck. Um, and this deck is fun, and it has skeletons, so I call it Skelefun. Skelefun. Um, so, since I added the Mummifies on in here, I've gone 20 and 3 with this deck. Um, and then before I had the Mummifies, I uh, was at 18 and 9. Um, and so this deck, it's it's all about the skeleton. So really, um, all about the Bone Daddy, the Bone Colossus. You know, it's such an amazing power card. Um, it has a kind of triple use of it buffs your board. It's a big body and it produces a bunch of tokens. Um, so kind of a triple threat. And um, I used to have only four of these in here, and now I have six of them because. Um, playing three Wake the Dead. So I at first I only had one Wake the Dead um, because I thought, oh, I don't know, is it going to hurt my tempo or whatever. But this card is so powerful. I underestimated how good Wake the Dead is. Um, so, you know, 90% of the time you're going to be pulling Bone Colossus with Wake the Dead uh, just because Bone Colossus is such a key power card. Um, you know, Another maybe 5% of the time you'll get your Skeleton Champion, just in case you need the uh, lower cost board buff, um, or, you know, maybe the guard. And then, you know, there's other um, pulls from Wake the Dead as well, like you could get a Skinned Hound or a Dark Guardian or something like that, or Icy Shambles, uh, depending on what your uh, use case is. So, um, you know, there's a bunch of Skeletons in here. Skinned Hound, Wandering Skeleton, Dark Guardian, uh, Headless Zombie, Icy Shambles, Skeleton Champion, uh, Bone Colossus, and then Vastri herself, she is not a skeleton, but she does fill your lane with skeletons. Um, so, you know, Vastri, really great if you can follow her up with like a Skeleton Champion or a Bone Colossus to give all those skeletons she generates a buff and also she gets buffs for the more skeletons you have so um you know really nice card um so this is kind of like a mid-rangey type deck um you know you are kind of trying to apply uh, uh early pressure and you know sometimes you just win on you know turn six or so but um you know a lot of times you win by playing out bone colossus um, and then just the next turn, just, you know, go crazy, especially if you can follow a Bone Colossus with another Bone Colossus. Um, so, um, uh, do want to apply some early pressure, so you have things like Crown Quartermaster, which, I mean, I just love Crown Quartermaster, Sentinel Reclaimer, and Discerning Thief. <laughs> it's such a great value engine that, uh, I kind of just stick it in all my blue decks. Um, so... Um, yeah, there's, you know, some kind of mid-range kind of utility here. You have your Icy Shambles to, uh, slow down your opponent. Bunch of guards with, like, Skeleton Champion, Skin Town, Dark Guardian, uh, and Gatekeeper. Um, little bit of draw with, uh, One Wilds Incarnate and, uh, Fork of Herpilation. Uh, but, like, a lot of times you're more just, you know, trying to curve out and, um, win when you can play your Bone Colossus. Um, so, yeah, that's basically how the deck works, so you know, let's go see it in action. Yeah, so this is a deck that I use to climb into Legend, uh, this season, and, um... You know, it's the main deck I've been playing on ladder. I've been playing some other jankier stuff on ladder too. Um, otherwise, my rank might be a little bit higher. But um, yeah, this, you know, really, really solid deck. Nice kind of mid-range game plan that's, you know, good against most decks. Um, there's not a lot of life gain. The only life gain is Barrow Stalker. So, uh, you do want to watch that life total, but you have things like Dark Guardian and, you know, a bunch of other guards, um, to watch your life. Okay, so against Telvani, I don't want the Icy Shambles for sure. Um, I think I will keep the Skin Hound and Wardcrafter. Skin Hound to play on two, and then Wardcrafter, um, 
You know, I always like to keep Wardcrafter as a utility card. I don't like to play Wardcrafter on two. I certainly will play Wardcrafter on two if it's my only two, but um, especially with something like Sentinel Reclaimer in hand, then the Wardcrafter can generate a lot of value later in the game. So, um, really nice to see two Wardcrafters. I just think this is the best card in the game. Um, so, you know. Um, okay, so into this pointy wall. I might just use my haunting spirit into the pointy wall. I think that should be uh, pretty good. Um, I could also do like Sentinel Reclaimer and Warcrafter. Okay. <laughs> Two harpies, okay. <laughs> That's fine. Um, so, yeah, let's. Um... Let's do the Sentinel Reclaimer into this. Well, and then I'll just find use useful. one of the daggers right away just to save myself the mana next turn. Because I think I'll probably um, be wanting to have the dagger on her next turn. Okay. So, I guess, yeah, I'll just... Lose my honey spirit here. Let's put these to use. Um, so I do want to play around Ice Storm here, so I will ward my Sentinel Reclaimer. Although it is weak to silence, but you can't play around everything. Watch yourself now. And then, um. Yeah, next turn I'll, you know, probably play out the Steel Sword and send a Reclaimer, unless I need to use a Wardcrafter. Um, you know, Mummify has been so helpful. I added it because I was having trouble dealing with uh, Oblivion Gates, and I just hate losing to Invade. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to have an answer to Invade, so I added the Mummify, but it's also really good against, you know, like, um, uh, um, Dark Seducer, and you know, it's useful against lots of things, right? Answer for Gambler and stuff like that. Um, so that's it's been a really good addition. I should should have added it earlier. So opponents thinking for a long time. Hopefully that means that they don't have anything good. Um, if they don't, I can kind of you know, smash them uh, on my turn. And, um, yeah, Dark Guardian, I, I really like this card a lot. You know, the extra draw. Yep, they really don't have anything. Um, the extra draw that it provides can be really helpful. And just the 2-5 is just a really nice body for a guard. Okay. Let's put these to use. Um, so Yeah. Your blood will spill. Careful, friend. I keep this should be, you know, pretty resilient board here. Um, you know, good against ice storm. Um, I do not fear good against most things. Okay, wow, they're really, really taking it slow, aren't they? Um, so I might have lethal here. Yeah, I do have lethal here. I could mummify this, but I'll just save it. If they do hit a prophecy, I'd rather um, Let's put these to use. save that mummify for later and yeah okay now i can uh well, skip the last round um okay so yeah opponent had a really bad game so I will have your head. um you know not the not the toughest match there uh they drew really badly but um and we curved out really nicely So yeah, I, I didn't get a Wake the Dead or a Bone Colossus there. Usually you'll see either Wake the Dead or Bone Colossus. Um, and that's kind of, yeah, the 
that's the power card that usually pushes you over the edge, but um, yeah, sometimes you just don't need it. You, you can get a really quick start, you know, a lot of two drops. Um, not as many one drops as I usually like to play. I really like playing one drops. Um, and, you know, Crown Quartermaster is a favorite just because it goes so well with Discerning Thief. You know, the problem in general with one drops is that they don't provide value, right? A lot of two drops provide value and they give you some kind of draw um, or, you know, something like that. But one drops don't usually provide value, but Crown Quartermaster does, especially if you pair it with, you know, Discerning Thief or uh, Corner Club Gambler. And, you know, that dagger just gives you a lot of versatility. Okay, I think that um, this is probably going to be like a hand buff or rally type deck that we're playing against, um, but I don't totally remember. Uh, Wake the Dead, I don't need it this early on. Um, you know, like I said, usually you'll draw into either a Wake the Dead or a Bone Colossus, and it's really, you know, you want your Wake the Dead on turn 6, and... Um, the I bone class is on turn seven, so you know, living. like maybe against some decks, you might want to keep bone classes. Like, say you're against Telvani and you um, already have like a nice uh, early curve in hand. Wrong place for a midnight stroll. Then uh, you could potentially keep bone classes, but. Um, Usually you want to mulligan it and wake the dead. I'm trying to decide whether to play two cards here. I could play Quartermaster and Wardcrafter. Um, or I could save my ring. Um, I think I'll just Careful. put on Fred. the pressure. So I keep a spare blade in my position. Um, you know, maybe I want to save the ring because you do want to be able to get out, you know, the Bone Colossus um, as quickly as you can, for example. Okay. So... I will have your head! Wrong place for a midnight stroll. Don't underestimate okay. me. Okay. So I guess next turn I'll probably play Headless Zombie. I used to have three Headless Zombies in here, but I was finding it a little slow for this list. So I've cut significantly. Um, I'm down to one Headless Zombie now. And so next turn I want to play Wake the Dead. Um, so this turn, I'll play, I guess, that Headless Zombie. I mean, pulling the Quartermaster is not, you know, Wrong the highest value. <laughs> for that zombie. Okay. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> okay, jab my... That's fine. Um, actually, that gives me more value for the Headless Zombie now. So, um, trying to decide whether to contest his Mammoth or go field here. Um, because next turn, I was going to play Sentinel Reclaimer and Wake the Dead, which is all five of my mana, and I need to keep the ring. So, I guess I will not contest the Mammoth yet. I'll just play Headless Zombie in the field. And then I can play Sentinel Reclaimer over here next turn. Clean. Okay, that's fine. Hopefully no more of those prophecies. Oh, wow. Uh, Skeleton Champion's actually... pretty good. Um, you know what? I can save the Skeleton Champion for after I play Bone Colossus. So I'm gonna stick with the plan. To play Sentinel Reclaimer and wake the dead this turn. Um... 
I think I just want to keep playing everything field. Well, let's see if we can find something useful. No, I've only got the one premium bone colossus, so I always start by pulling that one. <laughs> Okay. Okay, let's go. So, I mean, they have a lot of pressure on. So, um, 13 damage next turn. Um, I mean, it's even possible that they could find lethal 7 damage on 6 mana, but... Um, I'm, now I'm a little scared of a prophecy. Wondering if maybe I don't actually play the Bone Colossus if I use Icy Shambles instead. Um, I can't play Icy Shambles and Skeleton Champion, but I think I do want to use the Icy Shambles because I'm just a little too worried about dying and I don't want them to gain that life. Let's put these to use. Connie. I mean, I don't have lethal, do I? Um, no, I'm one short, right? One short of lethal. Okay. Um, I guess I don't even need to break that rune. Okay, so I should have lethal pretty well set up for next turn. Okay, yeah, <laughs> they're just giving it to me. Uh, this was a worthy contest. Okay. Um, so I think I'll leave it with that. Um, so that's how the deck works. I hope you enjoy it, and uh, let me know what you think. Catch you next time.